This guy does have a new owner, me. I never thought I'd buy an iPhone on wheels, in this case, the Tesla, but this is not an ordinary Tesla. This might look like any old Model S, but this one, in fact, is the Plaid. The other day I was looking at Auto Trader and I couldn't believe that the same car that cost $150,000 just three years ago is now less than half of that cost. This kind of insane depreciation meant that I just could not help myself but buy this 1,000 horsepower iPhone on wheels. I didn't think I wanted to buy a Tesla, but 1,000 horsepower at this price point? Come on. It's still expensive, but nowhere near the price point that it was just a few years ago. And with Tesla continually dropping their prices on just about everything else, that just means that a 1,000 horsepower vehicle is now slightly more achievable. To get these kinds of power numbers from just about any other car manufacturer means you have to spend four or five times the cost of this used one. So you see, I had no choice but to pull the trigger. Since I just got this, I don't even have a clue of what a thousand horsepower feels like. All I can tell you is this is very, very, very quick. When I came across this one, I actually came across a few others and these are starting to appear in more and more frequency. If it was any other Tesla, like a Model 3 or a Model Y, I wouldn't even have come close to those, but this one in my mind is still kind of special. Not that there's anything wrong with the Model 3 or Model Y, they're actually great cars, it's just that everybody has them. But not everybody has the Model S, and I also think the Model S looks a lot better than the 3 or the Y. With the Plaid, I especially love how it looks from the rear end with the big wide wheels on the back, it looks the part of a 1,000 horsepower car. To the untrained eye, this looks like a standard Model S, but it does have some fat rear wheels, although I would argue that these rear tires should be even wider than what they are. The width on these are 295 in the back and 265s in the front. Apparently, these tires on these things don't last that long, so I wouldn't be surprised if I have to buy another set during the time that I own this car. But a 1,000 horsepower, a 1,000 pound-feet of torque, how is it even possible for this car to generate that much power? This is a giant computer rocket ship that's hurtling you through space and time at ungodly speeds. It's been an interesting experience so far and you can be assured that I'm gonna make a lot of videos on this car and what it's like to own the Plaid. When this Plaid came on sale, there were actually a couple others that also came on sale and I was surprised at how quickly they were gone. Within a few days, the two other ones sold. With that kind of demand, I didn't feel too bad paying the kind of money I did for this car because the market is there right now. I ended up getting this car at a dealer with 19,000 miles on it, just one owner, and apparently the previous owner got this car from his company. A company giving that man a Plaid for $150,000? Maybe that was a made up story. Who really knows? The benefit of getting this car at a dealer is I got all new rubber on the wheels and they needed them because the previous set was worn out. That's one of the benefits of getting a car like this at the dealer because they have to make sure that whatever they sell you is safe. With a private seller, you could end up with the Plaid with completely bald tires and be completely screwed. I drove this thing around for a good while before I bought it and so far things feel okay. And also this was a 2021 model which means I still have factory warranty on this. Right now we're in March and I have warranty on this till December 2025. That's over a year and a half. As soon as I bought the car, I'm gonna try to use the warranty for this one big issue that I knowingly bought the car with. Allow me to show you. This is not a multicolored yoke. In fact, the cover on this yoke has completely torn off. This is actually a common problem with the yoke and I believe that the Tesla warranty covers it in most cases, but in some cases they don't. So fingers crossed that it actually works out. Worst case, I could probably just get a cover and wrap up the yoke myself. But this doesn't completely surprise me and I did expect to have quality issues because Teslas are known for bad build quality. I'll have to do a video on my car just pointing out all of the panel gap problems and all of the weather stripping and every little thing that I found. Luckily though, I didn't really catch anything that's quite as bad as the yoke issue. If I can get a thousand horsepower for this price point, I think I can overlook some quality problems. 
To be fair, Tesla is a pretty young company and the quality problems have improved quite a bit over the past few years, but they still have a ways to go. They certainly haven't been around for decades and decades for them to have perfected the manufacturing process, but they're getting there. So far, this car has been a lot of fun because more than the driving itself is the technology. Everything is through the touchscreen and the voice commands work amazingly well. Going from a normal car to a Tesla, there is a learning curve. You have to get used to the yoke. You have to get used to having no stocks. Everything's a button on the steering wheel. There's no buttons anywhere inside the car. It's all through the touchscreen. It's all about piloting a piece of technology, which although it's really cool, it does take some time to get used to. I'll let you know after I've had this car for a while how all of it's turning out. Everything's through the Tesla app. You just walk up to the car with your phone, you get in and you start driving. No keys whatsoever. But just like a phone or a computer, I've gotten stuck with some errors on this thing, so I've had to reboot it a couple times. And also when I first got the car, I had a lot of trouble just transferring ownership from the previous owner to me. I had to call Tesla support, and then in a couple days, I was finally able to get my car to work normally. You're basically dealing with a lot of really complicated software and hardware that's dressed up to look like a car. But so far, Tesla support has been really responsive and amazing to work with, fixing all the problems in an instant. But if you think about it, they have to be. It's not like a washing machine where they can get to you in a few days. You have to get things fixed right away, otherwise you'll be stuck on the side of the road with a dead computer and nothing you can do about it. This car also comes with a few upgrades and most importantly, it comes with full self-driving which I can't wait to try out. There's been a lot of tweets lately about just how good full self-driving has become. Rave reviews about it everywhere on the internet. I guess I just have to find out for myself just how good this FSD thing really is. Besides the full self-driving subscription, this also comes with premium connectivity, which is really important with a car like the Tesla. This is how you get live traffic displays on your navigation, and you get live video and music streaming, basically the internet in your car. There's so many features on this car that it deserves a video of its own. My only hope with this car is that it doesn't continue to depreciate like a rock to where this is worth $20,000 a year from now. I'm betting on the fact that a thousand horsepower iPhone on wheels can only go so cheap. In the meantime, I better save up a budget for tires because I have a feeling I'm gonna go through a lot of those. Oh my god, this is so quick. <laughs> At this rate, I think I'm gonna have to head to Discount Tire pretty much tomorrow.